Polarian for you. And therefore, I prepared um, a small report page for the use case that you want to see your requirements. And in the next column, you want to see the test cases and also their test results. By simply using the widget multi-level traceability, this can be pretty easy. Um, so you would simply have to configure in your uh, widget parameters that the last test execution re results should be shown, and then it will show the last results. But um, often, especially in, in projects where you have to test different versions at the same time or are working on different versions at the same time and not the latest result is always the result you're interested <laughs> in, you would like to define a test execution query or a test run query so that, for example, you want to see the, the test results of a specific test run or a few test runs. For example, for the version 2.0, um, let me just create a query for this. This would be um, yeah, something like that. I will simply use ID now to just use this test run. And here I have these three test cases executed that are shown here, or one executed, one is passed, and two are not executed yet. And I can use this query to show just the test results from this test run. And as we can see here, there's no test case verdict for those not executed, but for the one that is passed. So, and now one step further, I would like to um, have this as parameter in the report page. Therefore, I can create a page parameter. And for example, I, I make it easy for me today to simply use a, a string um, where I can enter this query right now. Um, in general, what I'm showing now can be more complex and then you can add your logic to it. So based on maybe a release work item, you can select different uh, test runs automatically. Um, so, but now let's say we want to have a test query test query and we can add this parameter into the report page by using the page parameters block so that now every user can um, enter his values in there without going into the administration of the report page and now we can correct connect this page parameter with the widget parameter in the configuration of the multi-level trace widget. So let's connect this. I can do this by clicking on this uh, gear symbol on the on the right side and say, OK, this will always be the same as what a, a, a user enters in here. So now a user can simply enter ID V2 and then he will get uh, was it like that? Just oh, two zero uh, this way. So and now he will get the test results from this query. But now um, there might be more complexity to it. Maybe you want to do the following you might have um, a release work item, for example, where you said, OK, um, this release contains the following build, and there might be several test runs that are um, verifying exactly this release. And you would just like to select a release work item and automatically the test runs that are selected as a um, enumeration in here should be selected to sh show the results. And 
to do this. Um, we will change a little bit um, the page parameter. Um, so I will use now a page parameter um, release ID. Um, make it very simple for me again um, to type uh, the, the, the ID of the release in here just for, for an example. And we'll exchange this parameter here and make just the release ID available for users. So, but now we would have to add a logic between now entering the release ID, then creating automatically the test run query um, based on the release ID that should be in the widget then. How can we do that? And here, the topic of today <laughs> is coming in. Um, this would be done by using scripted page parameters. So um, let me enter an example value for a release. It was the ID DP524. Just for debugging reasons, and to create these page uh, scripted page parameters, we would have to go into the page script. This will be executed when loading the page and also applying the um, page parameter. So if a user enters something in here, clicks apply, then the page script will be executed. And here we can add the logic. So first of all, I already did it, prepared it. Um, we would uh, like to get the release ID, maybe just for um, reasons. So well, maybe I, I will do it live so uh, that you can follow what I'm doing. Maybe this makes more sense. Um, first of all, I need the, the ID of this parameter that I just created, and this is the ID release ID. And to get the value of this page parameter, I could um, access it via page parameters. So um, there are all the par page parameters in there that we, we have in this page, then the ID, and now it's different depending on um, which kind of page parameter is based on if it's an enumeration or something easy like a string here, you have to use uh, different methods to now access the correct value. And here it is just a dot value. Now we want to get, uh, now we just have the ID of the release. So um, you can simply check that by um, pasting the variable here and then click on show results. And we can see I just got uh, this value of the parameter. <clears throat> now I can or I want to get the release work item. So create another variable and use the tracker service, which is a starting point available in this context here. And this one has the method uh, work, find work item available and needs two input parameters. That's the project ID and the release ID. The first one, the project ID I can get in a live report page via dollar page reference dot project ID. So that, that's something um, used very often and you can, can simply uh, remember that because it's pretty quickly to get the project ID this way and then enter our release ID in here. And now what we have here is the release work item. We can check that again. So everything worked fine. Here we have it. That's what you see if you've got a work item, the release work item 524. And what we now want is to get uh, the test runs that are in this um, release, for example. And therefore, we simply get the value from the system fields 
um, therefore we can use the method get custom field um, and the ID of this custom field is release test evidence. And now we have um, a list of all of the, the enum options um, of, of the test runs. And because it's a list, we can access the first value. I, I made it very easy for, for the example today um, and just entered one value. We can uh, access the first value by using get zero in, in this list. And if we call ID or that, then we have this, this, this option. And if we call ID, we should get the test run ID. We can quickly check on that and see here we get the test run ID that was is, is selected in here. So the same that I used uh, previously. Now you could add or create your own logic, um, how the test run query should be created. Here I um, make it pretty simple, a pretty simple example by um, creating now a Lucene query um, using uh, ID because this um, test run query would have to look like this and we just have the ID right now. So I'm adding um, this to it, ID. And then adding the variable here, it's pretty simply, I don't have to concat it, I can simply add the variable in the string here um, and do exactly what I did before to get the ID. And now we have this test run query. So, and now we have to create a page a scripted page parameter. Now we have the value and to create a scripted page parameter out of it, there's a certain um, called syntax to it. And the syntax looks like something this, I just copied it for, for myself. Um, let's start step by step. It starts with a scripted page parameters and then dot put to put this uh, scripted page parameter into the context of the, the report page. Then we provide a name for it or an ID for it. Um, for example, test run query. And now there's something more to it. Um, we have to create a widget parameter or the same like a widget parameter. Therefore, we need this parameter factory based on the type of which um, parameter we have. This means um, this is dependent on, oh, let's go here into this widget parameters. We see here different types of um, widget parameters. This is a simple string field. This is a Boolean field and this is I don't know, maybe some, some enum se selection field. And this up here is also um, a, a special kind of data set field. And to create these, um, we have to use the parameter factory. Um, and this one is available in the rendering API of Polarian search for parameter factory, you can find it. And here we have to search for how to create a string parameter. And therefore we search on the left side for, for string. Um, oh, I'm blind. Here it is, string parameter. We want to create a string parameter and how to do this by executing the, the method string. And the, the factory is already available in the report page by simply writing factory. So 
this one is available in the context. And now we say we want to create a string parameter. And it says the definition that we have to set a label. So basically just the name of the parameter then. And this run query. And now we get a string parameter builder. And there we have to set the value of, of this parameter then available. And we can do that by now um, providing our carefully crafted variable test run query. And then we have to, to also execute dot build if we're done with, with everything. And now if I did everything correct, there won't any um, problems up here. And I should be able to select here this parameter. Um, yeah, now just for not getting confused, let me delete the test run query parameter before. So we just have um, our release ID as page parameter and our scripted page parameter test run query. And we can select that and we already see here our um, variable based on the, the release and the custom field of, of the release um, was created. And now we have it working correctly. So now we get the results of the test run v to zero. And if we want to have the, the results of the version 1.0, we can simply use now the release. Let's change it to that. And here we say, uh, see um, the correct test run for release uh, version 1.0. There, every test case failed. And so this, this works also correctly. And that's everything to what I've prepared for today.